Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. So if you could just let me know if you can see the full screen that says all about the Nova Scotia Work School liaison. Yes. Okay, yep. perfect. All right. So Nova Scotia Work School liaison, that's me. That is a fancy little title that they've uh, given to me and my colleagues across the province um, to nice. broadly describe um, who we work for and um, what we do, but I know it doesn't mean so much. So I myself am a certified career development practitioner. I'm going to get into a little bit more about my background in a second, but um, I just want to intro this whole thing um, by letting you know that this program has been in effect since uh, January 2018. I and one other person in New Glasgow um, started this program at two schools, um, one there and one here. And fast forward to uh, present day, the program went from pilot to permanent. Um, it is a joint effort between the departments of uh, education, early childhood development, as well as labor and skills and immigration. Um, recognizing the need for more uh, labor market information, career development information for uh, students, literally from, um, it was originally supposed to be like from seven to 12, but um, the way that the program evolved over time, mainly it's, it's focused on high school, uh, that being in some schools, it's grades nine to 12. Um, but I have colleagues across the province who are um, working in very rural areas. And for example, I think, you know, I was talking to someone the other day and they said one of their schools is literally, I think a hundred people from P to 12. And they had like seven grade 12s graduate just last year. So you can see the, the very differences. Um, anyway, we are now a team of 20 as of uh, August of this year. And uh, it keeps expanding very rapidly. It's kind of, uh, Overwhelming, but exciting for me because like I said, I, I started this and uh, really excited about it. So just go ahead. So all about me. So I am a certified career development practitioner. I have uh, going on 18 years experience in the field, working with Nova Scotia Works Employment Centers, which there are several across the province and several in HRM specifically. Um, I personally work for um, Opportunity Place, Nova Scotia Works Opportunity Place, and that's in Lower Sackville, Pavaquid Road. Um, and it does cover uh, the Bayview school area and community as well. Um, but previous to that, for many years, I worked for another Nova Scotia Works Center called uh, Teamwork Cooperative in the city. And um, um, my experience previously was working with, um, well, it started by working with unemployed adults, but then that expanded to um, include even job maintenance. So you get a job, but you're having difficulty keeping it, um, as well as underemployed. So there's, uh, there's quite a range of services available to all Nova Scotians now in 2022 and beyond. So what that means is my training and my background, I have uh, a lot of experience with um, understanding and knowing about the Nova Scotia labor market specifically, that, that's our, our number one focus, but um, uh, also, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna ask if you can mute that. <laughs> I wonder if I can do that. I think I can. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, um, basically, um, 
sorry, lost my train of thought on that. <laughs> um, yeah, labor market information, um, engaging with industry and employers, um, employability skills, all those kinds of things. So that, that's my bread and butter. So um, I work specifically in three high schools. Bayview is, is one that's my newest one. I've been there for well, going on two years now. Um, unfortunately, most of it was during COVID, so there wasn't a whole lot able to happen in, in terms of the, the depth and the breadth of experiences that I can bring to the school and the students. Um, but I also work at Sackville and Millwood High Schools. I, I started full-time with Sackville High when this first started, but um, the idea and the model that they, the government went with, um, our, our funders went with was, you know, spreading us out and covering more high schools. So that is where we're at now. It's obviously subject to change as time goes on, as with any uh, program when we evaluate it over time. Um, so I do, in my role, um, I'm planning, I'm promoting, I'm facilitating, I am my own, I'm kind of like, you know, that, that one man band or one person band where, you know, you're playing all the instruments at once, that's kind of me. So um, I do all my own marketing and promotion. I develop my own materials. Um, I communicate, I don't have an assistant. I don't have a, a team. Um, so I am, I'm the one doing all those pieces. And I say that, <laughs> particularly because sometimes um, I can, you know, you've got so many balls in the air and so many things to do and only so much time in the run of a week. So sometimes I can be a little bit uh, behind things rather, you know, if things get really, really busy in one school, um, it might be a little bit slower in another one. And so it's a, re it's a real juggling act, to be honest with you. Um, I love it because it's very different all the time. And I get to engage with a lot of really fantastic youth and uh, school staff as well, and families too. Um, in this picture, this is uh, me and last year's valedictorian um, at Sackville High. She's a brilliant young woman who has a bright future, but um, she's an example of someone I worked with right from grade nine to grade 12. Um, and I continue to stay in touch with her because she has a lot to offer um, as even a peer mentor um, for students as we move forward and I get the new ones and, and they cycle through. So um, yeah, I'm really proud of this young lady and uh, this is just kind of symbolizing how close I can get with some students and how working with me over time um, can create a more meaningful relationship in order for me to best help any students with whatever their career goals are. And this young lady, Erica, um, I helped her from everything from uh, getting her first resume done, finding her first job, uh, being uh, a coach and an advisor with regard to her, her goals, helping her find summer jobs and uh, internships. And she was French immersion and she wanted to uh, travel and, and do some exchanges so she hit all the pieces with me so yeah it's a it's pretty pretty awesome she's a pretty awesome young lady and I was I was proud of that um so I'm just going to jump right into some examples um because there's many um of the things that I do and I thought to myself you know I do a lot of explaining and talking but I actually have some some visuals to to help bring some of this to life. So one of the big things that I, that I focus on is exploration. So that being career exploration and labor market information. So um, while you see, uh, so I'm gonna explain the, the pictures here. These are all actuals. They're not ones that I, I found in uh, some uh, stock album um, in a, a photo dump. Um, the one in the, the, the top, left hand, hopefully you guys are seeing the same image that it's not your right. Um, that is um, a lady who she comes to schools, but she also has other things like she does outreach 
Um, as it relates to STEM careers, so um, STEM and STEAM, um, you know, being uh, the, uh, oh my gosh, science and technology and uh, engineering and math. Am I saying them all right? Sometimes you take it for granted. You just, it, it, you're used to saying the acronyms all the time. You, you forget what they mean, but it, it's very science and technology based. Um, so Brilliant Labs um, was one of the uh, folks that I had her come in for um, a, a career fair that I held. And I also engaged with her at some other activities like uh, field trips that we were on. Um, she does some demos with, uh, with regard to coding and, um, you know, robotics and things like that. So it's really cool, very interactive, the stuff that she can bring to the table. So those are the kinds of things that help bring life to certain industries and fields. Um, the gentleman in the bottom corner is uh, demonstrating um, a virtual uh, simulation of, I believe that one is for welding. So that was at uh, a trades fair that I just went to, um, I think it was last week actually. Um, and, and students are always welcome to these things. Like I try to find opportunities for anyone um, between grades nine and 12. If you're interested, you know, you're, you're always invited, but it's tough because number one, I can't necessarily, I can't take any students on a field trip by myself. I can be a chaperone, but a, a teacher or at least a support person that works for the uh, HRCE has to be the one to kind of, you know, sign off on everything and be that main chaperone. So it's a little bit challenging in that way, but I always offer it as kind of like, if you can get yourself there, I can meet you there. And you know we can walk around together, and we can engage, and um, I can advise and guide on how to ask questions of employer or industry folks, um, you know, and 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 help with kind of figuring out what to do, where to go, how to talk, you know, how to how, how to present yourself and get that information. Um, and then I just show like. Uh, a couple of the things. So in the uh, bottom right, you'll see, or left, sorry, you'll see the, uh, that's alluding to um, the Explore Career site that um, we use in my industry all the time. It's a great tool. Uh, it's just one of many, but it's one that gives a lot of um, labor market information and education that includes education and training and jobs and um publications that help you to make career decisions and resources and all that great stuff. Um, there is a tool that's not included here that I didn't show a picture of, but um, all students have access to a program that is, you know, similar and relatable to it, but it's literally built for uh, Nova Scotian students. And that is called My Blueprint. And that is um, every student has access who has a, a GNS PES um, account so they go into their launch page and there's a little icon there and it can take you through um, self-assessment tools uh, to get an understanding of you know what interests you and what your aptitudes are what subjects you like um, and does a lot of career matching it's, it's one tool of many uh, but it has a lot of great things in it so I use that quite frequently uh, with students when I'm working one-on-one -on -one or I do uh, class presentations and weave that into it as well. Um, as we all know, the living wage for Halifax is, uh, I kind of cut it off there because, you know, it's not even, that was only last year that I used this piece of information to do a classroom workshop, kind of outlining, you know, this is what things you have to consider. Cause I do some of that too. It's like reality, I call it reality check. Um, and you know, it's all about, okay, so we all can do whatever we want to do. There is no perfect scenario. You don't have to go to university. You don't have to go to college in order to have a meaningful pathway out of high school. But I always want students to know, but here's your reality. 
And so you can take that information and marry that with whatever it is that you're going to work towards so that you don't have any surprises when it comes down to uh, that moment. Well, okay, now I've graduated. We had the fun. We did the things. And now what? So uh, the reason why I hit the bottom is because literally this report has been updated to, um, if you've seen it, because it's been all over the news, the, the living wage is somewhere around 2350 which is crazy <laughs> because when you think about it, minimum wage is still under $14 an hour. So there's, there's quite a, a discrepancy. That's a whole nother kettle of fish and a whole nother workshop, I think. <laughs> uh, but that gives you an idea of that. Uh, so another big thing that I do is uh, employment and job skills initiatives. So that top picture, um, that was uh, within the first year that I was, doing this role. That was a fantastic initiative that I would love to see more employers do. So what you see there is me with a group of students who, and an employer, and a female pilot. I wonder if I can highlight here. So where my little cursor is. So this lady back here that looks like she could be a student, braces and all, she was, she's phenomenal. She's a commercial pilot. Oh, I think Jeannie got kicked out. Back in. Um, so, uh, and this this gentleman over here in the back, he is a cargo manager uh, at the airport. He, oh, I'm getting some feedback again from uh, a mute of microphone. Just want to just make you aware. Trying to find, see, I and he, here I am, the, the one person show again. I'm like, okay, how do I get to the chat and the letting people in and the screens and the top? And so I'm like all over the place sometimes. But anyway, this, this gentleman here, oh, he else is coming in. Uh, he's an employer that we got together and he said, you know what? I'd love to try to um, hire some high school students out at the airport. Um, initially, when we started this initiative, he had said that there would be like a, a bus or a van to transport students um, and that there would be um, some after school work, but um, it, and you'd be expecting to work sort of late into the evening, like maybe 10 30 or 11, and then um, also on the weekends. So, and they were paying uh, above minimum wage, and it was all really exciting. So, we got together and said, okay, what would be the best way to do this because he said you know what I, I could use maybe like uh, uh, a few um, students so why don't we um, set up something from here so I suggested he come right to the school and do a meet and greet which is what you see here um, so all the students got prepared ahead of time worked with me or someone else that they were comfortable with to get them ready to um, hand out resumes shake hands um, come presentably you know uh, with their with you putting their best foot forward i guess we'll say i'm still i'm still here in an unmuted microphone if i could just ask whoever that is just to just to mute so we don't get feedback there that'd be awesome thank you um so we did the meet and greet they explained what the job is about some about the company and then um the the um folks in in that you see in the picture here now I say folks because yes it's all guys in this picture but I'm very proud to say that there was you one young lady she's just not in the picture and uh and and she also became part of the initiative but um I think we had somewhere around 14 of them um when all was said and done we uh followed up this meet and greet by arranging a uh, trip to the airport to actually take a tour of the company and see the people in action doing the work that he was hiring for. Um, and then from there, we set up interviews directly at the school. So that is like what I consider the creme de la creme of uh, initiatives in terms of real life career development experience, hands on from beginning to end. I, I'm so glad that we did that. Um, and I just saw so. This young man right here is still there. He, uh, and, and so this was, I think 2018 or 2019, we did that. Um, he, I, he's now got a full beard and he looks like he's about 25, 
but uh, he's still there and he says it's great and he's learned a lot. Um, I asked about the young lady because I knew that she became a team lead um, at the airport um, and, and she loved it. In fact, it was starting to interfere a little bit with her grade 12 year. I had a teacher come to me once and say, uh, I think she might be skipping school for work. And I was like, okay, it was intervention time because this is not what we wanted. So, but yeah, she graduated, she went on there and now she's, uh, so this young man said to me, um, she's doing great. She's working still in the industry. She just kind of moved up and beyond and um, it was it was great for her. So there's lots of opportunities. This particular employer was super um, engaging and understood youth and wanted to give youth a, a, a chance. Um, so he ended up hiring just about every one of them that you see here. So it, it kind of worked out really awesome. Um, the one on the bottom is, uh, so every year I typically do uh, March break workshops and summer uh, camps as well. So this particular one was pre-COVID um, and I had a three day, usually I do about three days worth of workshops um, I did pivot to virtual, but it's way more fun when it's in person. Uh, we did some hands-on activities and um, they got a couple of certifications from uh, bits of, of training that I have access to. And we were able to help them with um, learning all about, you know, how to get a first job and um, how to do some career exploration and, um, you know, how to network, how to interview, all those good things to get you ready for the workforce. So that's one of those. Um, and here's a lovely collage I did. So I'm, I'm just gonna highlight on all this stuff. So, so you see there, um, so over here, this was last week. Um, that would be me and the Sackville High African Nova Scotian students support worker and the O2 teacher who arranged the trip. Um, and if you don't know what O2 is, that is, I'm, I'm not going to kind of get into that a whole lot um, because by grade 10, your student would have already had to pick it by grade nine. So, um, but if you want more information on that, absolutely. If you have younger kids and you want to know. Um, so that was at the Trades Exhibition Hall. So we went there. There was awesome. There's another picture with me and a student that I'm pretty close with. Uh, we did uh, some hands-on activities in a variety of the building construction trades, and it was pretty phenomenal. Um, this place is open to tours and demonstrations uh, pretty much year-round. Um, it had, I had always known about it, but I had, this was my first opportunity to go, so I, I was really thrilled about that. This young man in the middle here, uh, one of my students, um, who I'm um, super proud of. And by the way, anybody that is, is on here that I didn't blot out, I have their permission to, to talk about them and post their pictures. I just wanna say that as well. Um, super proud of him, an indigenous student who um, I worked with on employability and resume and uh, preparing for jobs, but also with career exploration. So, um, I'm happy to say that he is uh, in the Valley doing a program at NSCC now. Um, so I helped him from beginning to end with all the pieces that he needs to do that. Uh, the, the, and this is an example of a flyer. I've got a couple of them here where, I, you know, I, like I said, I referenced that I do March break and, uh, and uh, summer camps. Um, this one up here, this was a recent uh, conference that I attended. It was a forum on uh, the blue economy. So all about like jobs related to oceans and environment um, and sustainability and all that kind of stuff. And um, it, it, it was a, it, it's a workforce development conference. Um, and there was a piece of it that was focused on how do we attract youth and how do we get them interested and um, give them knowledge and that kind of thing. So it was a great day. So that is also part of what I do is attend some of these things and bring back information and start making connections between um, the schools and uh, folks that um, might be interested in, in, you know, I could, I could have people come do 
presentations in the school or demonstrations or whatever it is that they have to offer. Um, but I, I can also make connections between um, students and the, uh, uh, the industry folks so that they can have that direct uh, conversation as well. Um, the one in here that I'm circling, so that was uh, first job boot camp that I did over the summer, just the summer. I paired up with uh, the lovely teen specialist at Sackville Library, because uh, I also uh, partner with a lot of folks whenever I can. Because um, I find that there's value in, you know, partnering with folks from different communities, from different backgrounds, um, folks that may have different uh, cultural experiences that can also kind of um, work with me to help, um, uh, you know, make students feel uh, included and welcome and that there's other knowledge coming into it, not just me and, you know, I don't, I don't claim to have all the answers and of all people's experiences. So um, it's always nice when you can, um, you know, when you can bring other people into the fold and work with them in collaboration because uh, it's, it's a lot of fun and you learn a lot and uh, the, the students benefit because they get, uh, they get a, a, an all encompassing group of people that can more understand where they're coming from. So that particular scene here is, uh, is a, it's called the cup stack challenge. So it's all about communicating with them about um, teamwork and communication. And there's lots of employability skills that you go through, but you know, that's kind of what we did. I, I feed them, I give away prizes. Uh, we do some fun stuff and uh, have a good time learning. Uh, down here, you'll see a, a student. He, this is the Nova Scotia Skills Competition one year. Um, so students have opportunities to engage um, if they have a particular skill area. Um, there's a, a, a thing, for lack of a better term, because it's evening now and <laughs> I may not have such good words at, th at this time of, of the evening, sorry. Um, the Nova Scotia Skills Competition is a valuable extracurricular piece. It's a lot of fun that students can engage in um, by showing their skills and competing against others um, in other high schools in a variety of different, um, uh, I want to say trades area, but professional um, things as well. Like, uh, like there's a um, Oh gosh, I want to say because like hairstyling is also technically a trade, but there's another name for it. And again, I, I apologize, it's not coming to me because, um, yeah, it's the end of the day. So yeah, so this student is in action, competing and doing uh, cooking. Um, so students have opportunities every year to engage in that. Um, down here we have a couple of my faves that I worked with, um, they did an entrepreneur fair. So I helped them both with, you know, all the sort of logistics of how to network with people to um, like the, that young man that you see there um, had to reach out to some vendors to try to get, it was brilliant actually, just as a quick aside, he, go, he was able to get the, you can't see it in the picture, but it's a great big uh, slushy machine that normally go, doesn't go for under, I think he said like 200 bucks. Um, so I contacted this guy, the, this vendor first and um, uh, the supplier, sorry, and uh, got the two of them connected. And then I showed him, you know, how to start the conversation and then he just took off his natural. Um, so he ended up getting it for like 50 bucks. So they, they did really well. They were very popular with the entrepreneur fair and they had a great time. Um, this is a photo of me at one of the libraries, actually the Tantalon one, because I do outreach there, um, especially in the summertime. I try to be everywhere and offer service um, wherever, wherever the students might collect and families as well. Uh, down the bottom here, that's part of the trades fair that I went to, um, as I referenced last week. It was Indigenous focus, but it wasn't all just for Indigenous folks. They, you know, they, that's the beauty of that culture is that they're saying, yes, we want to focus on the resources that are available to the Indigenous community, but everybody's welcome. So um, that was really wonderful to be a part of that. So yeah, uh, this is just some of the stuff 
that I engage in from one minute to the next. Um, this lady here, that's the teen specialist I just referred to at the library in Sackville, um, the Oceans Conference, me at the library. And truth be told, this is my husband. He's the African Nova Scotian student support worker that I showed you earlier in that other picture. Um, and it's great fun. He's at Sackville High. So we have some great uh, partnerships with students there. And uh, yeah, and it works really well. So um, lastly, before, because I know that my colleague is on here as well, even though I can't see everybody, I know I let her in. Uh, I'm gonna introduce, um, I'm gonna introduce her in a second, but so I think I'm just about at the end here. Um, I wanted to put in a plug for Let's Talk Careers. As you can see, um, it is a, a program, it's an intro to career planning, but it's for me to facilitate with folks like you. Um, so families, mentors, anybody that works with youth, I can give you some information to help, uh, help you at home with your youth. So giving you some, some tools to use and some understanding about you know, where to find certain things and, and how to use those resources to help your youth at home and how to start those conversations with, with your youth. Um, so I do that a couple times a year. So um, if anybody wants more information, um, I probably will. Uh, I'm pretty confident I'll be doing a round of it in uh, November. So um, I'm happy to engage with people about that. Now, where can students and families find Miss Tasco? So yeah, they, you know, school environment. I, I'm often introduced and kids know me as Miss Tasco, but I also go by Charlene and Char. Um, and as you can see, there is no shortage of ways to find me and to connect with me. Um, I am everywhere, or I try to be <laughs> all over. And yes, you'll see, if you can see that, I've got a bar here that's kind of blocking. But at the bottom is, yes, I have a brand new TikTok account because let's face it, like I've seen the studies on this and, and use, use TikTok more than they use anything. Uh, probably Snapchat is up there too, but that's not really an effective tool for given information. So I, but I, but I am familiar with TikTok and I am starting to come into that. So as you can see, there's lots of ways to find me and connect with me and engage with me and to find out that like opportunities. And um, if I have job postings or if I have events or um, if I know about volunteer opportunities, um, oh gosh, I, I've got a list in front of me, like, um, if I have a, a guest speaker that wants to come in, um, I, I tried, I piloted doing career development councils at each of my schools last year. It's just difficult when you're there in this particular case, as you can see at Bayview, I'm, I'm there on Tuesdays, but it's, it's uh, difficult to, to, to get that commitment and, and that time that it takes to develop the relationships to bring those students together, but the idea, and I still want to revisit how I can get that going again in some other fashion, is to give them opportunities to advise me on what they think they need as far as career development goes, and um, also um, give them some fun things that they can help me with. So last year we tried to do, well, we did a scavenger hunt, but right at the time that we were supposed to take off with that, the first time we got shut down for COVID again. So um, we did a smaller version. It just wasn't wasn't a, a huge, well-known thing because everything was still kind of under restriction. So, but we keep trying. We keep moving through it. So now, Nova Scotia Works Opportunity Place is the wonderful organization who I have a contract with. Um, even though I don't see them half the time, hey Amanda, um, I am um, very proud of the work that they do there. This is Amanda down in the corner with, uh, can't even see, um, with uh, one of our colleagues, Caitlin, there at the trades fair that we were at. And, and I have brought Amanda in to talk about the services that exist uh, at the center for students beyond uh, high school, as well as for you, um, you know, because this is a, a service for all Nova Scotians. So, um, Amanda, I'm gonna stop my screen share. And if you wanna take it away, uh, I don't know if you have any, we didn't connect ahead of time, but if you want to put up any 
slides or anything I can hey, can you, you make access. me co-host I sure can yeah that'd be great hi everyone my name is Amanda Kroll I'm a career practitioner at Opportunity Place as Charlie mentioned my internet is a bit wonky whenever I put my video on so I'm gonna just wanted to pop on quickly and say hello but I'll, I'll turn off my video so that um, I'm able to still present perfect so I won't take too much of your time this evening, but we did want to just quickly go over our services at Opportunity Place. Should you be interested in accessing our services or if your students, once they graduate, if they want to connect with us, we're more than happy to, to work with them. And often in the past, uh, Charlene has referred some students who, who graduate from, from high school to uh, connect with us to continue that employment support. So we're happy to do that. So Opportunity Place is an Nova Oh, Amanda, I don't know if you can hear the out. audio. Yeah, it was a little, little crackly there on my end. Yeah, my internet isn't the greatest here. Just bear with me there. Technology is great when it works, eh? Yeah. Let's try this again. I think what I'm going to do, rather than put it in presentation mode, I'm going to do it as a PDF. Sometimes that's easier to present and less technical difficulties. All right. All right. Can everyone see that okay? okay. Charlene, you can see me, yeah? And mm -hmm. you can hear me? Yeah. Perfect. All right. So as I mentioned, we're a Nova Scotia Works Employment Services Center. So our Opportunity Place uh, Center is located at 108 Cobbacred Road in Lower Sackville. So we support both job seekers and employers navigate um, a variety of services. So we offer career planning, we offer job search support for employers. We help with recruitment and, and planning and HR support as well. So you can find us Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. You can reach us by phone, fax, email, or our website. And although this is our main time that we serve um, individuals, we are very flexible. So we support a lot of individuals who are working full time and they're looking for to make a career change. So we're very flexible in the services that we provide. So oftentimes we, we schedule times outside of the, the regular scheduled day um, to provide virtual service. A lot of our services as well, are, our workshops are pre-recorded so that individuals that are working during the day can still access some of our programs. So our services are open to anyone in Nova Scotia who's looking for work or looking for career support. So whether individuals are looking for their first job or they've been working for a number of years and, and wanting to change careers, or perhaps they're looking at wanting to start their own business or looking at returning to school. So looking at going back to school and updating their skills, we have uh, services to support all those things. So we have, if you go, come to our center, we have a job search center, which is uh, for individuals who want to work independently on their job search or they're looking at different career options. We always have a career practitioner available to assist with resume critiques or to help with job applications online. But most of the um, computers there, you're, you're working independently, but you do have that support of our staff to, to provide. 
um, if you need assistance with your applications or assistance with your resume. In our job search center, we also have um, internet access, links to popular job search sites. We have assistive technologies for those that have disabilities. We have up-to-date labor market information. So there's always lots of job fairs going on as well as events in the community that we're promoting and sharing. We have oftentimes different employers coming into our job search center and promoting their opportunities. So whether that's on our job board or they're actually in the center doing recruitment sessions, then we have that uh, available at our job search center as well. We have office equipment. So we have photocopiers, fax machines, and scanners to use for job applications. And we also have a phone and voicemail for individuals to use to call employers to reach out. And it's an ac actual confidential voicemail where individuals can leave um, that on the resume if they don't have a phone themselves and employers can leave a voicemail for them and then they can check the, the messages so that they can still get those job opportunities. In our job search center, we can also share information on funding options and apprenticeship and provincial programs. We also offer one of our main services is our one on one support. So we have career development practitioners that work with clients one on one and we develop what's called a return to work action plan. So it's a action plan that's really supportive of their individual's goals. So whether that is to change careers, find a, their first job, go back to school, start their own business, um, update their resume, whatever it is, we create a plan and support them along the way. We can connect you with further employment assistance services. So we can connect you with the Nova Scotia Works online platform. So this is a fairly new platform where employers get an opportunity to advertise their posting, look to see what opportunities are available. They can access career resources online. There's this new job matching tool as well that we're starting to use to be able to match job seekers to employers. So this is one resource that uh, anyone could go on and create an account. We have job development services, so we can match you with connecting and, and connect you with employers who are hiring in your interested field. We also offer ongoing support in the workplace. So if you or the individual might need extra support, we can provide that job coaching to ensure that they have that successful transition to the workplace. We have career counseling available as well. So if individuals need those more in-depth career assessments, we can connect them with their certified career counselor and they can have those more in-depth conversations and perhaps get connected with further career resources and do more assessments and also they can connect you with community resources. One of our features at Opportunity Place are our employment related workshops. As I mentioned previously, we are very flexible and we can offer these services via uh, webinar style. So virtually we offer them one-on-one. -on -one. We get, we do offer them every month as a group. And then we also have a lot of our services pre-recorded. So we have our workshop topics recorded on our YouTube channel to provide to clients that need that um, support and resources, but just might not be available during that time of our workshop. So I won't go into every single workshop that we offer, but we have a wide range from career decision-making, so career planning, looking at your transferable skills. We have labor market information. And then we also focus on the main job search support and preparation. So updating resumes and cover letters, interviews, looking at preparing for a job fair, looking at developing goals to move forward. We also offer workshops focused on transitioning to employment, so looking at how to be successful in the workplace, managing change, looking at increasing self-esteem and stress and how that affects workplace. And then we have also different ways to uh, reach out to us. So we don't we don't have as much uh, social media presence as Charlene <laughs> does. We don't have our TikTok account yet, but we're, we're working on it. But you can find us on our website. We're launching actually a new website next week. So it's not live yet, but we're, we've been updating uh, 
our website. So that's www.opportunityplace.ca. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter, and that's where we post our new leads that we get from employers. We post job fairs, we post events and everything that's going on um, related to employment. So if there's any time that you yourself are looking for employment support or a family member or your children after they graduate high school, we're certainly uh, here and we offer all of our services are free and we would love to connect with you and support you. So you can reach out via email or phone or even drop, drop in at any time. You don't need an appointment to uh, come visit us. So I think now, thanks so much for all that, Amanda. Yeah, no problem. Um, I think what I'll do is in our last few minutes that we have here, I'm going to uh, stop the recording because we've given the information. Um,